sharp mind Oh, I'm best to say Oh, I'm best to tell you to run Oh, boy Oh, boy The moment they see, moment they are Well, pick me up with golden hand Oh, I'm best to say Oh, I'm best to tell you to run Oh, boy Oh, boy The moment they see, moment they are Welcome everyone. We're going to get started here shortly, but please feel free to write into the chat who you are and where you're signing in from. Hi, Patty from California. Welcome. Judy from Iowa City. Welcome. Becca, Minneapolis. Welcome. Caleb from Texas, Pat from Las Vegas, wow. Deb from Cape Cod, excellent. Well, you got a local here. We're here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Judy Henry, hi. Marilyn from Texas as well, Trish from Colorado, wow. Oh, we even have somebody here from Canada, Linda from Ontario, welcome. Oh, all the California really, really uh, pining for your weather right now. It's quite cold in Boston, so. <laughs> Welcome, Sharon, San Diego, Margaret from Ohio. Wow. Miguel from Long Beach. Haley from California. Welcome, welcome. Jewel from Charleston. All these warm weather destinations. Wish I was there. <laughs> Shell, Colorado. We have an office in Denver. Patty from Northern Virginia. Welcome, welcome. So a little fact about this song, I love this song, but for the past 15 years, I've basically made it a ritual of mine that every flight I take, and it's been, my goodness, hundreds over the past 15 years, every trip I take, I uh, listen to this song as we take off and it puts me in the best mood, ready to go for my trip. So happy to pass it along for anybody on their next trip. Try it out. <laughs> All right, everybody. I think we're about to get started here in a few minutes, or a few seconds rather. Okay. All right. Let's kick things off here. Okay, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar What It's Like to Be a Group Coordinator. My name is Alex Arante, and I will be hosting you today along with our speakers. Today, we have Lauren Gallagher, Director of Group Sales, who's been with the company for over nine years, wearing many different hats. Our second speaker is Carol McCarrick, who's been leading tours with Go Ahead since 2012, and she has successfully led seven tours all over the world and has two more upcoming. She has recruited over 225 group members. Wow. And she's now a global ambassador for EF Go Ahead Tours, and we're so happy to hear from her today. I'm going to let these ladies uh, introduce themselves in just a moment, but first I have a few housekeeping reminders. So attendees will be muted during the, ses 
the during the session, but I hope that um, we will make this quite interactive. So for everyone who is joining us, feel free to also introduce yourselves in the chat and where you're dialing in from. And if you have any questions that you would like our host to answer, don't be shy and use the Q&A box to do so. We'll also be uh, doing a few po polls throughout the webinar. So please feel free to participate. We really wanna hear back from you. And now to kick, kick things off, I will hand things over to Lauren Gallagher. Lauren, can you share a little bit more about what you do within EF Go Ahead Tours? Of course. Thank you, Alex. And thank you for that song. I could have danced for a little bit longer there, but I know it's important that we get started. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And hello to everyone who is joining us today. As Alex said, my name is Lauren Gallagher, and I am the director of group sales here at Go Ahead Tours. Um, as the director, I wear a lot of different hats, um, from working with our operations team to make sure we're offering the best and most unique tours, to building out resources to help our group coordinators with their recruitment efforts. My main focus, though, is really overseeing and working with the team of tour consultants and account managers that work with our group coordinators. So for anyone who is interested in bringing a group of six or more people, you're paired up with a team here at Go Ahead. So from picking your tour to checking into that flight, we take care of all of the details for you and we have a lot of fun doing it. I will say that the most exciting part of my job is when I get to actually talk to our group coordinators. Um, Carol and I have just had a blast even putting this webinar together. I think once we can travel again, I'm gonna get on a flight to Ohio because we need to have a little <laughs> wine date. Um, but Carol has been fantastic over the years. She's led so many tours with us and she's actually even one of our ambassadors who help new group coordinators um, get started. So I am so grateful and happy to be here with you, Carol, today. And fun fact, I was actually Carol's first tour consultant with Go Ahead Tours. What was that? Almost 10 years ago, nine years ago at this point. Um, crazy. They hired me at age 16. Can you believe? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> you too, Carol. <laughs> We're so young then. Uh, so Carol, do you mind sharing a little bit more about um, yourself and what it means to be a group coordinator, your background, your journey with Go Ahead? Well, first of all, um, yes, Lauren, come to Columbus because I see that Margaret is also here. We're both ambassadors from the Columbus area. So come out, we'll treat you to a good time here in Columbus. But we, I actually started with the student division about 20 years ago. And I, a bunch of Girl Scouts said to me, Mrs. McCarrick, take us to Europe. And I thought, yeah, sure, why not? And um, after an orientation meeting and everybody said, you've got to go to um, you know, EF Tours, go ahead family, they will do the best trips. Um, and after selling a bazillion boxes of cookies, we made that trip happen. And when I got back, people said, I wish I could be a Girl Scout, then I could go to Europe. And I said, I'm quite certain you don't have to wear a sash to go to Europe. So that's how this whole thing started. So we did start with that student division about you know 20 years ago, and then moved over to the adult division where Alex was my first consultant. And that's how this whole thing started. And um, any of the ideas that we talk about today, certainly I have gotten from awesome group coordinators, such as the Margarets that are on today, and um, other ambassadors. So this is just a culmination of everything I've learned over the last 20 years. So hopefully you can find something to take away from this. Thanks. Excellent. And I think a question we often get is who can be a group eight, group coordinator? What does it take? Do I have to apply? What do I need to do? Um, so Lauren, I'm going to toss it back to you. Can you speak a little bit about um, who can be a group leader, what it takes? Of course. And Carol, I love that you told those Girl Scouts that they don't need to wear a sash to, to go to Europe, but you definitely look more fabulous doing it. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try that out on one of my next trips. But honestly, Alex, I, I love this question. And, and it's kind of the beauty of the program is that anyone can do it. We have people from all over the country, all ages and all backgrounds. Uh, to keep it simple, what we always say in the office is it's the friend who plans all the fun. That person who is always dreaming up a new adventure and get people on board. So people often ask, you know, who can do this, but also how can I do this and how do I even get started? 
And that's pretty simple too. You just start talking to your friends and oftentimes those friends start talking to other friends and the network really grows and grows and grows. So we have worked with book clubs, we've worked with wellness groups, faith-based organizations, alumni groups, friends and family groups. We even have a polka dancing group going in 2021, which just seems like so much fun. The red thread for all of our group coordinators though is this enthusiasm about sharing travel. So for anyone who is interested, the first step is probably the hardest for me. It's really looking at that full bucket list and deciding where to go. Well, that's the fun part is deciding where to go, right? Um, Carol, tossing it back to you, how do you usually go about working with your tour consultant to pick a tour from the over 175 tours that we offer um, and start to spread the word to your group members? Well, you're right. It's it's working with the tour consultant, but first, because there are so many tours that you mentioned, you know, the almost 200 tours, and any iterations you want to make of those tours, the first thing I do is reach out to the group of friends that we want to travel with, and you have to find out not only where they want to go um, and what their interest is. Is it history? Is it food and wine? Um, you know, is it art, literature? So find out kind of where they want to go to hone that list down what time of year do you want to go? Do you have kids that you're taking with you that you have to think about vacations or can you use uh, take advantage of those shoulder season prices and the length of time? Can you take a three week sojourn or do we need to think about a you know five to seven day city stay? Um, so there's just so many options that it's important to hone in on what would fit best with your group. And then of course, you go back to your um, tour director, you pick the best tour that fits what the needs are. And then at that point, let the recruitment begin because that's fun. That is so much fun. Excellent. And now we're actually going to do a quick interactive poll while we have everybody. Um, so just curious to know, who would you most likely invite to um, join your group? Is it friends? Is it family? Is it colleagues, community members, religious community members? Who do you see most likely joining you on tour? We'll take a couple seconds here. And the poll results, let's see. Oh, overwhelming. 86% said friends. That's awesome. And I'm sure for most of you, this is probably a mix of um, a lot of these different categories together, which is great. It's, you know, we're going to talk more about recruitment as well, but great to hear. So um, in this case, spreading the word is the fun part. Um, Carol, I wanted to share, uh, or want you to share a little bit more about what you do, um, because everyone's a little bit different and everybody has a different approach as a group coordinator. So I just wanted to talk about um, what you do to, uh, to differentiate yourself with recruiting. Well, it's, it has certainly taken on a different approach this year, right? In the past, we did the old, um, I guess the old fashioned way of doing it with, I did email, I meet people for um, a glass of wine or a cup of coffee to talk about the tour. And at this point, I'm not talking about prices or itinerary. I just wanna get the interest level up to spread the word that we're going to do this. Of course, this year, social media has been a game changer for my group. Um, putting something on our um, my Facebook account and setting up an event to host a, a, a Zoom to Facebook Live, certainly not in my comfort zone. But normally, um, we would hold a recruitment meeting at our local library, and that was great. You know, people would come, we'd hug, we'd you know, serve food. I'd go over the PowerPoint to get the itinerary out there. Um, but with the help of my tour consultant, I was able to set up this Zoom to Facebook Live. And realistically, it was probably more impactful and, like I said, a game changer for our program. Normally, if we'd have 10 to 15 people show up at a meeting, suddenly I had north of 75 people showing up. And by the way, it's on my timeline, so people can go back and review all the details of the trip. Um, one of the things I would say, that very first meeting I had when I was with the student division, and I hosted an in-person meeting, and I set up 40 chairs, and I had food for an army from Italy and Greece, uh, a semi-customized tour. Uh, four people showed up. Count them, four. 
Um, that tour ended up filling up to 44 people. I had to save one seat on the bus for the tour director, but it filled up. So what happened in that year from that first recruitment meeting, which I actually like to think of it more as giving people an opportunity to travel versus recruitment, because that's how I feel about this. I, I, um, but anyway, so it was going back to emailing, meeting people, finding out what is um, holding you up? What is the challenge that you didn't come to the meeting or sign up? And of course, I always had the applications in my purse with me um, when I'd meet with these guys. And sometimes it was, well, we just couldn't make it. We want to go. So at that point, the deadlines become very important that we'll talk about later. But um, it, it can be discouraging at first, but you just persevere and keep recruiting every single day. And that's kind of you know how we do it as our group. Excellent. And then Lauren, um, I wanted to toss things over to you to talk about the recipe for success and what you see um, really makes up a successful group coordinator. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Carol, you're like so many this year too of, you know, technology has changed as a lot of us are, you know, working from home and at home a little bit more, but it's really been advantageous to us because we can extend our reach to so many more people. So um, we are definitely leading into technology a little bit more so too. Um, and we had mentioned, you know, every group coordinator recruits a little bit differently because all of our group coordinators are so unique. So what we've done over the years is we've listened and we've put together best practices from across the board of what really works. And once you're paired up with that tour consultant, they want to take the time. They want to understand who are you, who is your group, and how do we apply this recipe for success to your individual group? So we can talk about every recipe needs ingredients, right? So the ingredients to the recipe of success um, really starts with casting a wide net. It is super, super important. And Carol, you just mentioned it. Your first meeting had four people. Um, we want to make sure that you're reaching out to a lot of people so that um, we know that about 20% of the people that you actually invite on the trip will sign up. So if you follow all of these ingredients to the recipe perfectly, if you miss this one, then you won't actually reach the numbers that you're looking for. So go ahead, what we wanna do is we wanna supply you with all the tools and resources. So your tour consultant will actually put together a link for you to gather your RSVPs. And this is gonna be the best way for you to organize and keep in touch with all of your participants. The next step is gonna to be to build that value. So you are partnering with Go Ahead to plan your group members dream trip. So we want them to understand absolutely everything that is included. You yourself are the biggest value add because you add so much to this, but they're also going to be getting their flights, their hotels, their meals, transportation through all of the different cities, um, the tour director, and these are just naming a few. So we want them to really understand all of the pieces of the program. Next, you want to set a deadline. Um, we want to set a deadline because, you know, enroll by this date. So you know the makeup of your group. Once the group is together, a lot of our group coordinators do a lot of special things for their group that we're gonna have Carol actually speak to in a little bit. Once you have that deadline, you want to follow up. Everyone has so much on their minds right now. So we wanna make sure that they don't forget about this trip. If the deadline is on Friday, maybe you shoot them a text on Wednesday and say, hey, I know you were super interested. Let me know if you have any questions. It's just a way for you to be there and help them along with the process because there are so many people out there that might not think that this is possible, but one quick conversation will actually put them over the edge and get them to join your group, which makes it that much more fun. Excellent. And once you have the group together, that's when our group leaders really um, come to life. People get so creative, especially right now, um, in engaging their groups. Um, Carol, what are some of the th ways that you bring your group together pre-tour? This is really fun. And this has taken on a whole new dimension this year. 
because I plan my tours out, you know, at least one year in advance, you, you have that excitement of that um, your recruitment party, whether it be on Zoom or whether it be in person, hopefully soon. And, and you've got to, you can't just go dark, right? You just can't say, okay, you know, see, this seems very cold to me. See in a year when we see um, at the airport. So what we do is we have a Facebook page dedicated to um, that, uh, that tour specifically. And in that Facebook page, along with an email, because not everybody Facebooks, um, once a month, I send something about the country we're going to visit. So this is pretty simple, right? So um, it's, it sounds daunting, but December, you know, how does that country celebrate Christmas, for example? Um, you know, January, the post could be, it's really cold. What is a great recipe that um, is uh, intrinsic to this country? And I'm going to try it and pass that recipe on to you. Uh, you know, February could be this day in history in that particular country. You get the idea. So, and you can also put a poll out, like what would you like to do in your free time? So the whole Facebook um, and with uh, email has helped me keep in contact with my group pre-tour and build the excitement because it, you, you know, your tour is one to two weeks long. It should, that excitement should last for at least a year. So it's been fun for me to learn the culture, history, and um, recipes of that country and pass them on to my group. The other thing we do, and I know a lot of group coordinators that do this, is we have a pre-departure uh, uh, mixer. So about a month before we're going to take off, uh, I get everybody together at a brewery or a winery or at my house or a restaurant, you know, depending how it applies to the tour we're going on. And we get together and we um, get to know each other. Probably 50 or 60 percent of my um, group travels on every trip, but there's that 50 to 40 percent, 40 to 50 percent that has never met this group before. So that mix that mixing is really very important. So everybody gets to know each other. We have a tiny little business meeting at the beginning of the mixer where I go over things like um, what to pack, what we expect the weather to be like tips, don't forget to um, stop your mail, comment your credit cards, you know, all those kind of tips, again, add value so that my group knows that I'm looking out for them, that I'm taking care of them. So um, it's just been, it's been a really great way for us to connect again in person pre-tour. And that's how we stay connected pre-tour. That's great. It sounds like your travelers are so well engaged and well prepared uh, before they even get to the airport, like you're saying. Um, so that's great to hear. Great tips. Um, as far as, you know, next step, what do you do that kind of differentiates yourself as a group coordinator um, while you're on tour to add value? Oh, this is great fun. And this sometimes is, is very serendipitous, right? It depends where um, the opportunity lies. So one of the things that it, I like to do is, is feed my group. Obviously, that seems to be the thread of what I'm telling you guys. Everything is about food. So one, uh, we were at Valley of the Moon. And um, before we took a hike, I asked the tour director to take me to his favorite. Um, it's a Sultania, but it's like an empanada shop. And let's buy the group a picnic. And that's exactly what we did. So before we traveled along this beautiful landscape of the Valley of the Moon, we had a picnic. And it was just so much fun. Um, another time on a, you know, on, on a tour, uh, we are in Bolivia in Iuni, the salt flats, and we wanted to have the sunset with a glass of wine and pizza. And we did that uh, same type of thing, just buying them food on tour. So again, they just feel like, you know, this is a value that our group has together. Um, because I do have travelers that go on the individual side, you know, the um, grandmother will take her grandson, and I'm very happy for that, you know, and I know that the the individual side on GoHead is going to take really good care of our travelers. But when they come back, they do say it's a lot of fun to go with our group, which, of course, we've named the Wandering Friends. So that's how we it, there's just so many things you can do on tour. And those are a couple of the ones that we've done in the past. Excellent. And then I think, you know, the next question is really um, post tour. Um, and I think sometimes people forget about that, the importance of post tour um, engagement. So what are some of the things that you do for your travelers after you guys come back? Okay, you have worked all year. So you're a group coordinator, you've worked all year, you've had that first meeting, whether it be on zoom or live, you have done whatever it is that you do all year round to take care of your, um, to make sure that everybody's in the loop on the tour. Oh my gosh, you've had the meeting before the tour. You've had so much fun on the tour, adding all that value. 
again, you don't want to go dark. You just want to say, yeah, yeah, see you at the next recruitment meeting. No, we're not going to do that. Um, you've got that momentum of fun going. So what do you do? You have a, a post party. Um, we, it's very easy. We just do a potluck type thing at somebody's house. Um, we all reminisce. The people that have traveled with us a lot start talking about previous tours that we've been on. The people that are new to our group feel like they are truly a part of our family, of our wandering friends family, because now we have this collected, uh, collective uh, memory of this past trip. So they really feel again as part of our group. Um, the other thing we do is we just kind of drop a hint of this is where we're going to go next. Um, again, no details are shared. You know, we just tell them, hey, stay tuned to your Facebook, look at your um, emails, and we'll send you when um, we're going to get together because you know, we start that whole recruitment process all over again. But I, again, it's an opportunity type thing. Um, and you just, again, you want to keep that momentum going. And it's just fun for people to feel part of this community that we've created over the last 20 years. That's great. And you've mentioned you do trips usually every other year. So I'm curious to know, how do you promote a trip that is, you know, a year to even two years out? How do you keep that going? Yeah, that is really critical. I started out doing um, trips about every two years, then I went to yearly. I don't know that I want my tour consultant to hear this right now, but I, we're looking at, because we've had some time on our hands, at um, setting up more than a tour of year because the group has gotten so large that we can do that. But one of the things that I do, it's not just about that um, recruitment meeting, but all year round, I keep those Facebook, my main Facebook page, travel page going with um, different things, recipes, culture, all those sort of things. Um, the other thing I do, which is natural for me, is I always carry my business card. And um, the business card has everything on it. It's got my wandering friends uh Facebook page. It's got my wandering friends Yahoo account. It's got my digits. And it also has um, my um, microsite on the back. And a microsite is very, uh, first of all, to new coordinators, um, go ahead, we'll give you business cards, which is really nice for these events. But the microsite is really nice because, for instance, um, true, I haven't had my hair cut for a while, but when I did get my hair cut, um, my stylist said, oh, my mother would love to go on one of your trips. You take out the card and say, well, here they are. They're all listed. And I give her a couple cards and, um, you know, to hand out to her friends if she wants to travel with friends. So it's, it's, again, it's recruitment, but I consider it giving people an opportunity to travel that might not have done it on their own. And what from, my, from our um, pre-planning here on this webinar, I understand that Alex's mother hands out uh, business cards willy-nilly in a grocery store. So she I does. just like, <laughs> I'm going to send her a stack of my cards and see what she can do for my program. You know, I'd like to amp it up to 500. Um, but, you know, that's really important to them. <laughs> if she could help me, that'd be great. Um, it's really important um, to absolutely hand out these cards and to keep your program going. But it all comes back to... Um, the email, the Facebook to say, okay, here's our next trip and get that going again. So it's a momentum, keep that momentum going of your fabulous travel family. Excellent. Well, I'll have to ask my mom if she can help you out there, but she's not shy for sure. She loves to <laughs> hand out business cards and brag about what her daughter does for a living. So, um, well, my next question is really about the group leader benefits. Um, we love our group coordinators so much and we want to make sure that they're, um, you know, that we're showering them with love and, and tons of benefit opportunities. So um, my question for Carol is, you know, what motivates you to be a group coordinator? Um, based on those benefits that we offer you? Oh, we feel the love. We love our free places. I don't know anybody that doesn't love their free place. It's really helped my family um, be able to travel economically. And I will tell you, when my kids were little, I mean, they were little, you know, two and four. And I said, I just want them to see Venice before it gets flooded. And, and we did. We, <laughs> we got to see Venice before it flooded. And the, these kind of benefits really help my family um, travel the globe. So that free place is very helpful. Another thing is those global points, which to be quite honest, at the beginning, I wasn't sure how I would use them, but they really are awesome as well. You can use those points. And I know Lauren's going to talk about this a little bit, but I can use those points 
to buy product from a website, the go ahead website. And I can give those out at my recruitment meetings, those products out as a raffle, or if you bring somebody else, you know, you get something. Um, I can use those points for my own personal travel. If I want to go on Margaret's trip, I can uh, use my points and go on her trip. I can buy airline tickets. So those points are really kind of the icing on the cake. Um, and you see the picture there of my friends and family traveling. Truly, when I started the Girl Scout gig, I didn't even know I got a free place. Just the uh, being able to travel and share these memories with my family and friends, I would never regret. I don't regret one minute of this. It has been so much fun doing this. We laugh. We laugh the entire tour. The, the whole world could be collapsing around us. We're laughing at our tour on tour. We have a blast. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Excellent. Well, um, Lauren, I think I'm going to pass it over to you to just talk about um, earning points and dive a little bit deeper into that, if you don't mind. Of course. And we really do love our group coordinators. Um, so Carol, I'm so happy that you feel the love. Um, Carol mentioned that free place and we really want to make sure at Go Ahead that we have the lowest free place ratio in the industry because we want to help as many people as possible be group coordinators, but also have the ability to share that with their friends or family or network, whoever you want to give that free place to. So how it works is for every six people you bring on your trip, you get one free place and you can use that in any way that you want to. Now, when it comes to the global points, People really do love their global points. Um, and we want you to have even more free travel. Um, so how points work is, let's say you recruit 15 paying travelers on a 10 day tour. You'll earn one point times 15 travelers times 10 days, which equals 150 points. A Little bit of math here for you. But once you start doing more tours, um, we're actually going to put some multipliers on there. So as your global reward status increases, you could even get four times as many points on each trip. And a lot of people ask, you know, what can we actually use these on? So Carol mentioned this, but you could put them towards a different tour, flights, electronics, our convention tours. Um, you can use these in so many different ways. Um, our convention tours are a great use of points. Um, these are the opportunity to actually bring together group coordinators from all over the country to travel together and you're able to actually bring a guest. So next year we'll actually be exploring, you know, food and wine in Slovenia, Christmas markets in Munich and uh, even Sri Lanka, just to name a few. Honestly, having been on uh, several conventions myself, those I think, I mean, you can't put a point value on them. They're awesome. So, so much fun. Um, so I want to do another poll, actually. Um, so it's going to come up here in just a minute. And um, the question is, which redemption options are most appealing? We're always curious to know how people, um, you know, what motivates them. So would it be flights, um, electronics, maybe a new iPad, uh, convention tours, love them, um, on tour experiences or tour discounts for your uh, group members? Go ahead and vote. All right, let's see. Okay, convention tours. We sold you on those. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. argue there. That's awesome. <laughs> that might have been a little bit of unfair because I was selling the convention tours before we took the poll, but oh, there um, you go. <laughs> convention tours and I think flights were a, a close second there. I think um, all of us are eager to just get on an airplane. Um, but I really do love these convention tours. Talk about laughing start to finish. We just have a blast on these because our group coordinator community is honestly so amazing. But the magic doesn't only exist when we're getting all together and going on a fancy tour to Dubai or Sri Lanka together. Um, the community really exists at home too and we wanna create opportunities throughout. So we host group coordinator round tables where we get together you know, once a month and just talk about best practices or how things are going or reminisce about travel. 
we have a Facebook page where it is so active and everyone is always sharing fun pictures and memories. It just, it brings everything to life. And of course, we also have our ambassador program. So Carol's an ambassador, so I'll let her talk about it a little bit more, but these are our most experienced group leaders. And what we do is we pair them up with a brand new group leader to be their mentor throughout. And in talking to Carol throughout, you know, putting this together, we were talking a lot about her experiences. So I wanted to talk, have her talk a little bit about being an ambassador and really what she wished she knew on that first tour that she took. <laughs> I was asked this question a lot, you know, what do you, what do you, you know, wish you knew then that you know now? And the biggest thing I wish is that I would have cast that wider net earlier on in this career with um, EF and Go Ahead Tours, specifically Go Ahead. Um, had I known that that uh, selling a bazillion boxes of Girl Scout cookies 20 years later, I would be doing this, I would have definitely uh, ramped up travel a lot sooner. So if you're thinking about doing this, if you haven't done this in the past, uh, think about the future. You're probably, the fact that you're on this webinar, uh, you're probably going to be one of us very soon and have a great time doing it. That being said, um, it's, it, it's an honor to be called an ambassador. I, I know there's other great um, group coordinators out there that I've learned from. And what's so much fun about this is helping new group coordinators develop their program or just listening or, um, you know, hearing, you know, being a sounding board for ideas they have. I have a background in business, so I'm all about uh, goals and strategies and numbers to get to those goals. So um, anybody that has met me has seen my spreadsheets on these tours and they, I can tell you repeat rates and all that kind of thing. Um, we wouldn't necessarily need to get there with you as a, you know, as a mentor um, ambassador relationship, but certainly uh, all of us ambassadors are here to help you. And after this, um, if you wanna reach out, um, please feel free and I'd be happy to talk to you. That's how I got so many of the ideas that I put into practice. It's these type of webinars and office hours and all these things that the go ahead office does. I will ring these guys up, Alex afterwards and say, can I have Rick's phone number? Because I really need to talk to him about how he does thus and such. So these, again, I'm gonna reiterate what I said at the beginning. These aren't all from me. These are ideas that I've gotten from this greater uh, group coordinator ambassador um, community that we have out there. I, I couldn't have done it without my uh, tour consultant and I couldn't have done it without my partners in that community. So I do love being an, uh, and humbled by being an ambassador, but um, reach out if you would like to talk. We couldn't do it without you, Carol. I think that <laughs> you know it, it is such a great relationship that we have here. And I speak even from personal experience. Um, when I started at EF, I actually had never left the country. And 10 years later, I've traveled to over 30 countries. And it's really because of people like you that have pushed me to say, you know, you should check this out. And now I've got the travel bug. And obviously, I'm traveling every four seconds. But um, Thank you, honestly, for everything that you have done over the years, because um, you've built such an amazing program. Um, but I wanted to ask, you know, why are you a group coordinator? Oh. <laughs> it's, um, it's those memories that we truly that we create. Um, the one of my one of my I mean, one of my idyllic things in my head that I just love is we went to South America and we're going down um, the Amazon River in a moonlit night. And so on this boat is my brother, my sister-in-law, my best friends. And we land at the, you know, at the, at the, at the dock. And then we <laughs> climb up these steps and I look to the left and I look to the right and we had some teenagers. One of the things I love is the multi-generational tours when all sorts of kids and grandparents and stuff come. Um, anyway, so we get up there and I feel like we had landed in the set of Survivor. There's all these tiki torches going down to this fabulous, um, fabulous lodge. Those kids' eyes were as big as saucers. Okay, by the way, if you've never been on this tour, you, you need to go, it's fabulous. But that lodge wasn't where we were sleeping. That lodge was where we were eating and drinking. That was the, the, the restaurant and bar. Our actual accommodations were in these little, um, oh gosh, I don't even know. They're just out there, these, these cabins out in, in, in the Amazon rainforest. And you had to find your right little road to get to your own little cabin. When I say road, I mean path. And because it was our entire group took up all the cabanas, it was just, how could you not beat that for a memory? So the other thing is we land that night 
at that lodge and everybody's all excited. And the naturalists, because of course, go ahead tours as they do, hire naturalists to take us around. And the naturalist said, all right, tonight we're going to go on a tarantula and a bug hunt. So my brother that you saw on that boat suddenly turned seven years old. And he said, oh, I'm going on the tarantula hunt. And I said, you, you go, Dan, you go on that tarantula hunt because Carolyn, myself and the girls, we're going to them. That lodge, that fabulous, beautiful lodge, sitting outside, listening to the howler monkeys and having a piece go sour. That's why I do this. You saw some of the places that we visited, the joy that I see in people's eyes when we give them champagne and their private gondola ride in Venice. When I look at the joy in my brother's eyes, telling me all about the sloth and the tarantula he found that night, you, you can't beat that. You cannot beat these memories. If you do it once, I think you're going to be hooked. This is um, the best of best things to do with your life. I love being a group coordinator. That's amazing, Carol. And I think, you know, once you start traveling a lot, you know, so many people are in your life are like, you know, what's the best place that you've traveled to? And it's, I don't have children, but I imagine it's like picking your favorite child. And, you know, when I think about all of my, my travel memories, it's one of those things that it's really the people that are around me. You have those wow moments, but to have them with your brother by your side just makes it that much more special. Um, and, and that's really been so rewarding for me as I become more of an experienced traveler to share it with the people in my life around me. Awesome. Well, both of you have been so um, inspiring and insightful today. Um, I do want to end our session with um, some time for questions. Um, we did have some pre-submitted questions, so I'm going to start with those. But this is just a reminder um, to, at the bottom of the screen, there's a QA and a uh, feature that you can actually submit any questions. We've received a few during this time. Um, so please feel free to use that now. But I'm going to jump in with a couple of our pre-submitted questions questions first. Um, the first one is, is, is for Lauren. Um, how large of a group is needed to qualify as a group coordinator? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it's really what you're comfortable with. Um, and I think what we see is a lot of people's groups grow over time. In order to be considered a group coordinator, it's just that six to get a free place. So we have some group coordinators that bring six people. We have some group coordinators that want to bring 60 people. So it's totally up to you. Um, and we'll work with you to make sure that you're reaching your group size goals. Awesome. Um, my next question is for Carol. Um, is it possible to customize a tour? <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I'm laughing is because Alex, I think, was the first recipient <laughs> of my request to customize a tour when I went to the adult division. Um, yes. Now, I don't do, I, I almost always actually customize um, because I want to add a day. I never subtract days. I always want to add a day, an experience that um, my group has asked for. So I tweak my tours. Um, if it were up to that aforementioned brother that we talked about, um, he would totally love a custom, custom tour that we start from scratch. And here's how that tour would go. Okay, listen up, Kevin. Here's how that <laughs> tour would go. We'd start at Lake Cuomo at the Moto Guzzi factory. Then we'd go to Ferrari, Lamborghini, and then we'd go down to Porsche and BMW. We would do a motor tour. That's a huge customization, which doesn't exist in the bazillions of tours that you guys have but it is a tour that I know you could put together. So I have not done that level of customization, but I know that I've got partners that could help me do that. So yeah, I customize all the time. And thank you, Alex, for being my um, first tour consultant to help me do that process. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I should have known the answer to that question because I only spent you know six or seven years of my career working for the customized department, but um, <laughs> and we worked together on that. But yeah, coming from that department, actually, we saw, so many it's funny there's a lot of thematic um, things that kind of propel people to do more specific customized tours um, so I love my dad would definitely love to do that Italy uh, car tour so maybe <laughs> your brother has something going there um, but one of the funniest ones I had was a, a jazzercise tour jazzercise instructor from Honolulu Hawaii who had been leading the same class for 25 years loyal loyal following brought a bus of 45 travelers 
goes to Italy, Switzerland, and France. We found her a jazzercise class in Lucerne that they did, but mostly they weren't really jazzercising too much. They were eating and drinking and doing chocolate tours and patisserie classes along the way. So that was <laughs> pretty fun. And then I also had a group of um, security guards um, from a jail in California that wanted to do a professional development tour um, and visit a prison in um, Paris. So that was interesting getting the clearance for that. But you know, the world is your oyster at this point. And that's the great part about customizing. So there's a little plug for that. Um, my next question is actually for Lauren again. Um, can someone be a group coordinator and not attend the trip? Or are they required to do that? You can. I don't know why you wouldn't want to go on the trip. <laughs> um, most of our most of our group coordinators do actually attend the trip, but um, we do work with a lot of organizations as well. Um, so this is actually a great way to bring together your customer base as far as building up loyalty and retention. Um, or for example, we work with a lot of colleges and universities to put together trips for alumni. So in those situations, the group coordinator doesn't necessarily attend, but they are still the one that's organizing everything. And we can work with the organization to really understand what their goals of the trip are and tailor the benefits um, structure for them as well. So. No, you don't need to attend, but it's a lot of fun when you do. Great. Um, and I'm going to open it up now um, to some of the questions we received during the session. So one of them is um, from Patty. My travelers are from all over the country. I've already started a Facebook group. Great. Uh, for the tour group that I launched exactly a year from our departure date, which is November 30th. What other suggestions do you have for engagement pre-trip other than Facebook posts and potentially a Zoom happy hour meeting? Either one. I can start and then maybe Carol, you wanna add in some, but mm -hmm. we actually had a, um, uh, a round table with some of our group coordinators a few weeks ago and they were sharing so many great ideas for what people are doing, especially around the holidays. So we've had group coordinators that are actually making a part of their holiday card um, to put together a little bit of pictures just to get people excited or they're sending little gifts, you know, um, a bottle of wine out from Italy because that's where they're going. So there's so many unique ways that I'm starting to hear of how to engage people while everyone's at home. Carol, I don't know if you have anything to add to that too. Yeah, I agree. I think you're hitting, um, you know, all the main things, which is Zooms and, and Facebook and keeping them engaged. Some of the other things that I'd heard and not done yet, but I think it's a great idea is some people are getting on um, Vistaprint and sending out luggage tags. And again, going back, it's basically the same thing, going back and sending little gifts. Uh, don't forget we're going on this trip or the postcard, like a postcard from that country as a Christmas postcard to um, your group, or again, you know, in March, think of something um, that is relative to that country and send out. Excellent. Um, we have another question from Mari. Um, how do you select which travelers are part of your tour? Is it first come first served or how do you handle this? Wow, I would love to have that problem. <laughs> um, and I think every group coordinator that's sitting out there right now would say, wow, um, I can only hit fit 45 on that, oh, 44, because we have to save a speed. Um, I would say, yes, it's first come, first serve, and then you have a waiting list. Now, the other thing you can do is um, obviously run two tours. And I know um, somebody on this webinar is doing that next year. So and you could actually split it up into, um, to, if you have 40 or 50 people that want to go on that tour, think about splitting it up into two tours. That's a good, good suggestion there. I've seen that happen a couple of times. Um, another question, um, this is from Miguel. Are the coordinator benefits taxable income? Lauren? <laughs> Great question, Miguel. Um, no, so your free place is not taxable income. Um, we do offer um, various stipends and things like that um, that come along with it. Your tour consultant will always walk you through what your benefits are. Um, your stipends are taxable over $600, but they'll walk you through all of that. And what we do is all of the benefits is actually customizable to your group. So we will kind of talk through what is available to you, how we can actually make it, it work for you. 
Great. Um, Kathy was asking Carol actually about that trip um, with the lodge and the individual cabanas. Um, she wanted to name uh, know the name of the lodge and which trip that was you were describing. Sounds uh, like you uh, might have somebody to, ready to join you. <laughs> I'll join your tour. I'll join your tour. Just, um, you know, get, get them my uh, information. I'll go back. Um, it is the Inca Terra Lodge in the Monte Verde rainforest. Uh, it, <laughs> it is the Peru trip to go to Machu Picchu in Bolivia. So um, I, that tour was uh, amazing. If you get on Wandering Friends Facebook page, you're gonna see a picture of me jumping out of my husband's backpack. So in, <laughs> in Bolivia, in the salt flats, I would encourage that um, extension to this tour. Um, so it is the Machu Picchu tour, but you start in the Amazon rainforest. I mean, it is, it's everything. And you see Lima, Peru, and you see um, La Paz, Bolivia, the highest you know, city in the world. It is an amazing trip as I've never been on a bad trip, right? With Go Ahead. So they're all fabulous, but that Inca Terra Lodge, mm, fantastic. Excellent. Um, <laughs> Judy asks, is the group capacity 35 or 45? What are limits with group size? Yeah, that's a great question. Again, you decide. So we have some people that prefer a smaller group. Um, when we, uh, first of all, Go Ahead has a right size advantage, which is um, 35 people. So what that means is we won't actually book over 35 people if you are one on one of our public departures. You always have the option of going private and that's when you kind of decide, you know, I wanna keep my group too. You can go private as low as seven. So you could have that bus to yourself if you only have seven people. Or if you wanna fill every seat on that bus and go up to 45, that's okay too. Um, I really can't stress enough, every part of this program is fully customizable to you. So that's where that tour consultant comes in and asks all these really great questions about what is important to you. Is it a big group? Is it small group? Is it earning multiple free places? Is it, is it giving discounts to your tour? We want to work with you to make this trip a reality in whatever way makes sense for you. Great. Um, Linda, I'm assuming from Canada, um, asked, are the benefits the same in Canada? I'm going to answer this. Yes. <laughs> we don't discriminate to our friends from the north. Um, we actually have a, an office in Toronto um, and a full team there um, that you would actually work with a tour consultant from that office. Um, but yes, the, the benefits are the same. Um, as far as like taxes and things like that, that looks a little bit different. But again, your tour consultant is there to assist you along the way with the differences. But yes, um, you'll get the same free place. You can go on the same conventions with your friends from the South and the United States. And um, I mean, yes, same, same uh, benefits. <laughs> I, I like know, to say we're local to... everywhere. So what that means is you, if you're from Canada, your tour consultant is also from Canada. Our tour consultants in the U.S., they're regionalized, so they work with all the people from Ohio. Um, you know, if you're traveling to Italy, someone from Italy is going to be booking your tour. So we really are local everywhere. So we like to learn all of the different nuances from the different regions to make sure that, again, these programs work for you. You know, um, if I could Interject Sorry, yeah, go on, ahead. On, on the custom uh, on the tours and you talk about local your tour director has you uh for the region however i'm going to tell you when i want to know the minute by minute day by day itineraries because these guys all travel you know lauren and alex everybody the, the, this team in in the offices all travel all the time they will not hesitate for one second to put me in contact with a tour consultant that maybe have a different, that has a different area, but just got back from the destination that I'm planning. So although you have your tour consultant, they work so well together to get me the information I need. So I look really smart to my group. So um, they- You are they, really uh, smart. <laughs> no, I don't know about that, but they, they make me look really good. So although those tour consultants are local, they also, um, they, you know, they kind of cross brand so that I can get the best information from somebody that might be out of the Denver office. Awesome. Um, here's a quick question from an anonymous attendee. Do you have any tours to Estonia, Finland, or Greenland? I'll take that one. We go to all seven continents, including Antarctica. So we do go to Estonia, Finland, and Greenland. We pretty much go to 
any destination that you could think of, as long as it's deemed, um, you know, safe, safety is our number one priority here at EF Go Ahead Tours. Um, but we really have expanded our reach quite a bit over the past several decades, um, and I'm sure we'll continue to do so. So yes, we do go to those destinations. And then for the last question, um, what would be your advice to a first time group coordinator? Um, I'd love to hear actually from both of you from the perspective of, you know, Lauren from the business and then Carol as a group coordinator. Either one wants to go to first. I don't know. I can go Lauren. <laughs> I'm honestly have fun with it is my my advice, whether it's your first trip or your 40th trip. Um, I think that people want to travel with people that they like and that they're really attracted to. So I think that shows. And if you have this energy and you're enthusiastic about the trip, people are going to uh, be attracted to the trip. So have a ton of fun with it. Lean on go ahead. We are here for everything. If there's a question, we've seen it all. We send hundreds and hundreds of trips a year. So we, we know what we're doing, we think at least. Um, so if you have a question, just ask. We're always available to answer it. We want to be with you every step of the way. But really, it's just to be yourself. Don't overthink it and, and get the word out there. Oh, I agree. It's It's got to be um, an enthusiastic <clears throat> approach to this tour um, and, and what you're presenting to your group. I will tell you on my very first tour, um, I because I just said, yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to take these kids because what could possibly go wrong taking a bunch of 17 year old beautiful young women to Italy like what could <laughs> what could possibly be any you know go wrong. What I did is I learned as much as I could about leading a group. Yes, um, I was prepared to have fun. And I know that Go Ahead is going to keep us safe because I know my group knows how to have fun. But it was learning, um, like I said, from all these group coordinators, not just your tour consultants. I reached out to everybody. If there's an orientation that is available to you, take it. If it costs you points, take it. Um, I learned a how to add value, how to keep your group to not even what we're talking about here connected. I'm talking about how to effectively do count offs so they feel safe. You know, how do you lead them on tour so your group is connected and safe? My group knows how to have fun. I think we have some kind of reputation for that, but my group knows how to have fun, but it's how to keep them safe. So that first tour you're going to do, yes, cast that wide net absolutely cast that wide net. This tour has to be the most fun that you're ever going to have. But I say that on every tour, like you said, first tour of 40, have the most fun you have because those people are going to come back and they're going to chat, 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 chat about the great time they had. But as for operational, I got as much information as I could from this group community. I really did. Excellent. Well, Anyone who has any remaining questions, please feel free to reach out to us. I'm going to give you some contact information. Um, but while I have you all here, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today. We um, really did um, enjoy having you and, and hearing what you had to say through the polls and the questions. Um, of course, I want to give a, a big thank you to our speakers, Lauren Gallagher, so lovely having you, as well as Carol McCarrick. I mean, to see how everything has gone over the past decade, um, to see you now as a global ambassador and, and leading a webinar, that it's just amazing. Um, and then I just also wanted to give a plug to uh, future webinars that we have going up. Again, they're totally free, so please join us. Um, we have Travel Tuesday Travel Talks. That's a mouthful. Um, but we have one coming up next Tuesday, December 15th. Um, it is a destination spotlight on Germany and the special events in Germany that we highlight on our tours. So we'll have some of our experts from the field um, tour directors speaking about that. On January 12th, Tuesday, we'll be having a destination, destination spotlight on Spain. And then on Tuesday, February 16th, it will be focused on Australia and New Zealand. Um, lots to learn. Um, if those destinations interest you or you want to learn more, please, please join us. We'll have the experts there to answer questions. And um, let's see, lastly, I just want to thank you and also provide you with contact information. So if you have any questions, please give us a call, 1-800-438-7672. 
Again, 1-800-438-7672. Um, and you can learn more about the groups program actually on our website, goaheadtours.com slash groups. And it will give you all the details that you need about how to get started, run through the benefits again, um, and also have contact information. So you can start today, you can call your tour consultant, introduce yourself and say, I'm ready to go. This would be a great way to bring in the holidays um, and you know start off the new year. Um, you know, lots to look forward to. So let us know if you have any questions, we're happy to help. And thank you again for joining us today. Shall we play send me on my way again? <laughs> Dance party part. <laughs> now that I want to go on tour. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back to the Inca Terra now. Yeah, me, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.